The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Sanskrit, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is one of the principal Upanishads and one of the oldest Upanishadic scriptures of Hinduism. A key scripture to various schools of Hinduism, the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is tenth in the Muktika or Canon of 108 Upanishads. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is estimated to have been composed about 700 BCE, excluding some parts estimated to have been composed after the Chandogya Upanishad. The Sanskrit language text is contained within the Shatapatha Brahmana, which is itself a part of the Shukla Yajur Veda. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is a treatise on Atman, soul, self, includes passages on metaphysics, ethics, and a yearning for knowledge that influenced various Indian religions, ancient and medieval scholars, and attracted secondary works such as those by Madhvacharya and Adi Shankara. Topic: <laughs> Chronology. The chronology of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, like other Upanishads, is uncertain and contested. The chronology is difficult to resolve because all opinions rest on scanty evidence, an analysis of archaism, style and repetitions across texts, driven by assumptions about likely evolution of ideas, and on presumptions about which philosophy might have influenced which other Indian philosophies. Patrick Olivelle states. In spite of claims made by some, in reality, any dating of these documents early Upanishads that attempts a precision closer than a few centuries is as stable as a house of cards." The chronology and authorship of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, along with Chandogya and Kashataki Upanishads, is further complicated because they are compiled anthologies of literature that must have existed as independent texts before they became part of these Upanishads. The exact year, and even the century of the Upanishad composition is unknown. Scholars have offered different estimates ranging from 900 BCE to 600 BCE, all preceding Buddhism. Brihadaranyaka is one of the oldest Upanishads, along with that of Jaimaniya Upanishad and Chandogya Upanishads. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad was in all likelihood composed in the earlier part of 1st millennium BCE, around 700 BCE, give or take a century or so, according to Patrick Olivelle. It is likely that the text was a living document and some verses were edited over a period of time before the 6th century BCE. Topic. Etymology and structure The title Brihadaranyaka Upanishad literally means, Great Wilderness or Forest Upanishad. It is credited to ancient sage Yajnavakya, but likely refined by a number of ancient Vedic scholars. The Upanishad forms the last part, that is the 14th kanda of Satipatha Brahmana of Shukla Yajurveda. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad has six adhyayas chapters in total. There are two major recensions for the text, the Madhyandina and the Kanva recensions. It includes three sections, Madhu Kanda the fourth and fifth chapter of the fourteenth Kanda of Satipatha Brahmana, Muni Kanda or Yajnavakya Kanda, the sixth and seventh chapter of fourteenth Kanda of Satipatha Brahmana and Kila Kanda the eighth and ninth chapter of the fourteenth Kanda of Satipatha Brahmana, the first and second chapters of the Upanishads Madhu Kanda consists of six Brahmanams each, with varying number of hymns per Brahmanam. The first chapter of the Upanishads Yajnavakya Kanda consists of nine Brahmanams, while the second has six Brahmanams. The Kila Kanda of the Upanishad has fifteen Brahmanams in its first chapter, and five Brahmanams in the second chapter. Content First chapter The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad starts by stating one of many Vedic theories of creation of the universe. It asserts that there was nothing before the universe started, then Prajapati created from this nothing the universe as a sacrifice to himself, imbued it with prana life force to preserve it in the form of cosmic inert matter and individual psychic energy. The world is more than matter and energy, asserts Brihadaranyaka, it is constituted also of Atman or Brahman soul, self, consciousness, invisible principles and reality as well as knowledge. The Brahmana 4 in the first chapter, announces the Upanishad's non-dual, monistic metaphysical premise that Atman and Brahman are identical oneness, with the assertion that because the universe came out of nothingness when the only principle existent was, I am he. The universe after it came into existence continues as Aham Brahma Asmi I am Brahman. 
In the last Brahmana of the first chapter, the Upanishad explains that the Atman soul inspires by being self-evident name identity, through empowering forms, and through action work of a living being. The soul, states Brihadaranyaka, is the imperishable one that is invisible and concealed pervading all reality. Topic. Second chapter The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad starts the second chapter as a conversation between a Jatashatru and Balaki Gargya on theory of dreams, positing that human beings see dreams entirely unto themselves because mind draws, in itself, the powers of sensory organs, which it releases in the waking state. It then asserts that this empirical fact about dreams suggests that human mind has the power to perceive the world as it is, as well as fabricate the world as it wants to perceive it. Mind is a means, prone to flaws. The struggle man faces, asserts Brihadaranyaka in Brahmana 3, is in his attempt to realize the true reality behind perceived reality. That is Atman Brahman, inherently and blissfully existent, yet unknowable because it has no qualities, no characteristics, it is neti, neti. Literally, not that, not that. In fourth Brahmana, the Upanishad presents a dialogue between a husband and wife, as Yajnavakya and Maitreyi, on nature of love and spirituality, whether and how is Atman related to deep connection and bonds between human beings. Yajnavakya states that one doesn't connect with and love forms, nor does one connect or love mind, rather one connects with the self, the soul of one's own and one's beloved. All love is for the sake of one's self, and the oneness one realizes in the self of the beloved. He then asserts that this knowledge of the soul, the self, the Brahman is what makes one immortal, the connection immortal. All longing is the longing for the soul, because soul is the true, the immortal, the real and the infinite bliss. The fifth Brahmana of the second chapter introduces the Madhu theory, thus giving this section of the Upanishad the ancient name Madhu Khanda. The Madhu theory is one of the foundational principles of Vedanta schools of Hinduism, as well as other Astika schools of Indian philosophies. Madhu literally means, honey, or the composite fruit of numerous actions on the field of flowers. In the Madhu theory, notes Paul Dusan, the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad asserts that, Atman exists. Soul exists, that all organic beings plants, animals, human beings and gods are wandering souls yet one with each other and the Brahman cosmic soul. It further asserts that inorganic nature fire, air, earth, water, space is the field where the beings act, and where their numerous actions create fruits that they separately and together experience. The Upanishad then states that everything is connected, beings affect each other, organic beings affect the inorganic nature, inorganic nature affects the organic beings, one is the honey result, fruit, food of the other, everyone and everything is mutually dependent, nourishing and nurturing each other, all because it came from one Brahman, because it is all one Brahman, because all existence is blissful oneness. This theory appears in various early and middle Upanishads, and parallels Immanuel Kant's doctrine of the affinity of phenomena, built on the synthetic unity of apperception. The last Brahmanam of the Upanishad's first section is a Vamsa generational line of teachers with the names of 57 Vedic scholars who are credited to have taught the Madhu Khanda from one generation to the next. Topic. Third chapter The third chapter is a metaphysical dialogue between ten ancient sages, on the nature of reality, Atman and Mukti. Paul Dusan calls the presentation of ancient scholar Yajnavakya in this chapter, "...not dissimilar to that of Socrates in the dialogues of Plato." Among other things, the chapter presents the theory of perceived empirical knowledge using the concepts of graha and atagraha sensory action and sense. It lists eight combinations of graha and atagraha, breath and smell, speech and name ideas, tongue and taste, eye and form, ear and sound, skin and touch, mind and desire, arms and work respectively. The sages debate the nature of death, asserts the third chapter of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, and whether any graha and atagraha prevails after one dies. They rule out six, then assert that one's ideas name and one's actions and work karma continues to affect the universe. The fourth Brahmana of the third chapter asserts, It is your soul which is inside all. All souls are one, immanent and transcendent. The fifth Brahmana states that profound knowledge requires that one give up showing off one's erudition, then adopt childlike curiosity and simplicity, followed by becoming silent, meditating and observant muni, thus beginning the journey towards profound knowledge, understanding the soul of things where there is freedom from frustration and sorrow. 
In the sixth and eighth Brahmana of the third chapter in Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad is the dialogue between Gargi Vachanavi, the female Vedic sage, and Yajñavalka, on the nature of universe. The seventh Brahmana discusses how and why the soul interconnects and has the oneness through all organic beings, all inorganic nature, all of universe. It asserts that the soul is the inner controller of beings, conflated with the interaction of nature, psyche and senses, often without the knowledge of beings. It is the soul, nevertheless, that is the true and essence, states the Upanishad. The ninth Brahmana, the longest of the third chapter, introduces the Nedi, Nedi principle that is discussed later, along with the analogical equivalence of physical features of a man and those of a tree, with the root of a man being his soul. The last hymns of Chapter 3 in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad also attest to the prevalent practice of the renouncing ascetic life by the time Brihadaranyaka Upanishad was composed in Vedic Age of India, and it is these ascetic circles that are credited for major movements such as yoga as well as the sramana traditions later to be called Buddhism, Jainism and heterodox Hinduism. Fourth chapter The fourth chapter of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad starts as a dialogue between King Janaka and Yajnavalka. It explores various aspects of the soul exists theory, its phenomenal manifestations, and its philosophical implications on soteriology. The Upanishad, in the first Brahmanam of fourth chapter, states that the soul manifests in human life in six forms: prajna, consciousness; priyam, love and the will to live; satam, reverence for truth, reality; ananta, endlessness, curiosity for the eternal; ananda, bliss, contentness; and stiti, the state of enduring steadfastness, calm perseverance. In the second Brahmanam, the Upanishad explores the question: What happens to soul after one dies? and provides the root of two themes that play central role in later schools of Hinduism, one, of the concept of soul as individual souls dualism, and second of the concept of soul being one and eternal neither comes nor goes anywhere, because it is everywhere and everyone in oneness non -dualism. This chapter discusses the widely cited, Nedi, Nedi, Nedi Nedi, not this, not this, principle towards one's journey to understanding soul. The second Brahmanam concludes that soul exists as self-evident, soul is blissfully free, soul is eternally invulnerable, and soul is indescribable knowledge. The hymn 4.2.4 of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is one of many instances in the ancient Sanskrit text where the characters involved in philosophical debate greet each other with namaste, namaste a practice in the culture of India. The third Brahmanam of the fourth chapter discusses the premises of moksha liberation, freedom, emancipation, self-realization, and provides some of the most studied hymns of Brihadaranyaka. Paul Dusan calls it, "...unique in its richness and warmth of presentation," with profoundness that retains its full worth in modern times. Max Muller translates it as follows, The fourth Brahmanam continues to build the thematic description of Atman Brahman self, soul, and the state of self-realization as achieved. Yajnavakya declares that knowledge is self, knowledge is freedom, knowledge powers inner peace. In hymn 4.4.22, the Upanishad states, "...he is that great unborn self, who consists of knowledge, is surrounded by the prana's life force, the ether within the heart. In it soul, there reposes the ruler of all, the lord of all, the king of all. He does not become greater by good works, nor smaller by evil works. He is the lord of all, the king of all things, the protector of all things." He is a bank and a boundary, so that these worlds may not be confounded. He who knows him soul, becomes a muni. Wishing for that world, mendicants leave their homes." Max Muller and Paul Dusan, in their respective translations, describe the Upanishad's view of «soul, self» and «free, liberated state of existence» as «self» is imperishable, for he cannot perish, he is unattached, for he does not attach himself, unfettered, he does not suffer, he does not fail. He is beyond good and evil, and neither what he has done, nor what he has omitted to do, affects him. He therefore who knows it reached self-realization, becomes quiet, subdued, satisfied, patient, and collected. He sees self in self, sees all as self. Evil does not overcome him, he overcomes all evil. Evil does not burn him, he burns all evil. Free from evil, free from spots, free from doubt, he became Atman Brahmana, this is the Brahma world, O king, thus spoke Yagnavakya. 
The last Brahmanam of the Upanishad's second section is another Vamsa generational line of teachers with the names of 59 Vedic scholars who are credited to have taught the hymns of Muni Khanda from one generation to the next, before its became part of Brihadaranyaka. Topic. Fifth and sixth chapters The fifth and sixth chapters of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad are known as Kila Khanda, which literally means supplementary section, or appendix". Each Brahmanam in the supplement is small except the fourteenth. This section, suggests Paul Dusan, was likely written later to clarify and add ideas considered important in that later age. Some Brahmanams in the last section of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, such as the second and third Brahmanam in fifth chapter, append ethical theories, while fourth Brahmanam in the fifth chapter asserts that, "...empirical reality and truth is Brahman." In the fourth Brahmanam of sixth chapter, sexual rituals between a husband and wife are described to conceive and celebrate the birth of a child. Topic. Discussion The Brihadaranyaka text has been an important Upanishad to the Vedanta scholars, and discusses many early concepts and theories foundational to Hinduism such as karma, atman and others. Topic. Karma theory One of the earliest formulation of the karma doctrine occurs in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. For example topic. Ethics The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad includes hymns on virtues and ethics. In verse 5.2.3, for example, it recommends three virtues, self-restraint, dhamma-dhamma, charity, danam-danam, and compassion for all life, daya-daya. Tadetatrayam six dhamam danam diamiti learn three cardinal virtues, temperance, charity and compassion for all life. The first ethical precept of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad became the foundation of yamas in various schools of Hinduism. In Yoga school, for example, the yamas as listed by Patanali in Yoga Sutra 2.30 are Ahimsa, ahimsa restraint from initiating violence, harm, injury to other living beings by actions, words or in one's thoughts Satya, satya restraint from falsehood Astya, astya restraint from stealing Brahmacharya, brahmacharya restraint from sex if without a partner, and from cheating on one's partner Aparigraha, Aparigraha restraint from avarice and possessiveness Topic. Psychology The verses in the Upanishad contain theories pertaining to psychology and human motivations. Verse 1.4.17 describes the desire for progeny as the desire to be born again. The Upanishad states a behavioral theory, linking action to nature, suggesting that behavioral habits makes a man. Ancient and medieval Indian scholars have referred to Brihadaranyaka Upanishad as a foundation to discuss psychological theories, the nature of psyche, and how body, mind and soul interact. For example, Adi Shankara in his commentary on the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad explains the relation between consciousness, the mind and the body, mind creates desire, asserts Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, with its basis in pleasure. I is the cause of material wealth, because it is through sight that wealth is created states the Upanishad, while ears are spiritual wealth, because it is through listening that knowledge is shared. The Upanishad suggests in the dialogue between Yajnavakya and Maitreyi, husband and wife, that one does not love an object for the sake of the object but for the sake of the subject, the self, the soul of the other person. Topic. Metaphysics Verse 1.3.28 acknowledges that metaphysical statements in Upanishads are meant to guide the reader from unreality to reality. The metaphysics of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad is non-dualism For instance, in verse 2.4.13 Yajnavakya asserts that everything in the universe is the self. The nature of reality or self is described as consciousness bliss in verse 3.9.28. Neti neti or not this, not this is a method of emphasizing the discovery of the right, by excluding the wrong. The verse 5.1 states that the universe, reality and consciousness is infinite. Permamada permamidam pernapermamudasayate pernasiya permamadaya pernamvavasisate permam adha, permam idam, pernat permam udasayate 
Pernicia permam adeya permam evivisisate, that Brahman is infinite, and this universe is infinite, the infinite proceeds from the infinite. Then, taking the infinitude of the infinite universe, it remains as the infinite Brahman alone. Translation by Swami Madhavananda. From infinite or fullness, we can get only fullness or infinite. The above verse describes the nature of the Absolute or Brahman which is infinite or full, i.e., it contains everything. Upanishadic metaphysics is further elucidated in the Madhu Vidya honey doctrine, where the essence of every object is described to be same to the essence of every other object. The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad looks at reality as being indescribable and its nature to be infinite and consciousness bliss. The cosmic energy is thought to integrate in the microcosm and in the macrocosm integrate the individual to the universe. Topic. Different interpretations The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad has attracted secondary literature and commentaries basia from many scholars. In these secondary texts, the same passages have been interpreted in different ways by the various sub-schools of Vedanta such as non-dualistic Advaita monism, dualistic Dvaita theism, and qualified non-dualistic Vishistadvaita. <laughs> Popular mantras <laughs> Pavamana mantra The Pavamana mantra is from the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad 1.3.28 Translation Topic Editions Albrecht Weber, the Katapatha Brahmana in the Madhyandina Kaka, with extracts from the commentaries of Sayana, Harisvaman and Davividanga, Berlin 1849, reprint Chaukamba Sanskrit Esser, 96, Varanasi 1964 Willem Kaland, the Satipatha Brahmana in the Kanvya Recension, Rev. ed. by Raghu Veera, Lahore 1926, R.E.P.R. Delhi 1983. Emil Senert, Brihad Aranyaka Upanishad, Belles Lettres 1967, ISBN 2-251-35301-1 Titus Online Edition based on both Weber and Kaland Sivananda Saraswati, the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Sanskrit text, English translation, and commentary. Published by Divine Life Society, 1985. Topic. Translations Robert Hume, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Oxford University Press Max Muller, The Upanishads, includes Brihadaranyaka, The Sacred Books of the East, Volume 15, Oxford University Press Radhakrishnan, Sarvpali The Principal Upanishads. New Delhi, HarperCollins Publishers India. ISBN 81-7223-124-5. Swami Madhavananda, Brihadaranyaka Upanishad Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, translations by Johnston, Nikhilananda, Madhavananda The Brihadaranyaka Upanishad with the commentary of Sankarakarya original Sanskrit and English translation Topic. In literature Poet T. S. Eliot makes use of the story, The Voice of the Thunder, and for the source of Dada, Dayadvam, and Damyata found in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. Sections of the story appear in his poem The Waste Land under Part 5 What the Thunder Said. References External links GRETILE text Brihadaranyaka Upanishad MP3 Recordings of Classes by Swami Tadatmananda, Arsha Bhatta Center Video, audio classes, reference texts, discussions and other study material on Brihadaranyaka Upanishad at Vedanta Hub Brihadaranyaka Upanishad Public Domain Audiobook at LibriVox